Hello open source silicon enthusiasts and welcome to the next monthly update. In today's update we're going to be talking about MPW7, MPW2 updates, job postings, new videos, is it time to say goodbye to UVM and rendering GDS with Blender and in your browser. So let's get started. So let's kick things off with MPW7. The deadline for that was the 14th of September and the Zero to Asic course submitted uh, another set of projects and a special shout out to Farhad and Peng and James who are all first time tape outs on the project. So well done everyone. There were 72 projects that were submitted and passed tape out. There are about 100 that were submitted overall. And you can see all these different projects here on the eFabulous uh, platform page if you want to take a better look. And I've already picked out some of my favorites, a RISC-V processor with a 5 gigahertz transceiver, an out of order RISC-V core and a CAN controller. So have a look, pick your favorites and let me know if you want me to invite the authors to an interview. And don't forget my eFabulous project browser tool that lets you easily see all the projects and search them to see what people are making and get the links to the projects and the GitHub repositories. eFabulous are looking for a silicon validation engineer. It's a full-time job and it's remote. So if you're interested in getting involved with verifying open source silicon, then drop them a line. On the topic of eFabulous, the MPW2 update posts are continuing to go. They're doing one a week. So check out this latest one about the updated hardware, the breakout board that has the, uh, the place to put your MPW2 silicon is on the top and it plugs into an STM32 uh, development board, which luckily are in stock. They've sent the PCBA order, so they're expecting them back within a week and they should be sending them off soon. In case you missed it, I did a really interesting interview with James Stein about making the standard cells for the open source Global Foundries 180 process. Uh, loads of good questions answered in there, so definitely worth a watch. News from Fossey Foundation, the Corio Libre has been released on the 13th of September and lots of interesting stuff in there. Uh, my picks are CocoTB 1.7 and then some information on the US Chips Act. Lots of money being spent there and we're looking forward to getting some money in the EU. Hopefully some of that will go to open source projects. Now a little bit of tiny tape out news. We're continuing to work on this behind the scenes and getting ready for the next submission series. So stay tuned for that. Join the mailing list. Uh, we've got some really great upgrades to Wokwe, so thanks Uri for that. We can now shift and select and drag multiple blocks at once, which is great. And we've also got undo and redo, so that's really good news. And then we've also got a really cool feature added by Maximo and Proppy, which is that now after your GDS is made for you in the cloud by the GitHub Action, we have a really cool 3D interactive viewer here where you can check out the stats, what standard cells are used. As you hover over, you can see what the cell is over here. You can turn on and off the fill layer, turn off unused cells. If you press three, you can highlight just one standard cell and get a good idea of how these things look like in 3D, all in your browser with no downloading any tools. And talking of rendering, I finally got round to doing a how-to video with Maximo and we looked at how you can turn your GDS into STL files, import them into Blender and then make amazing renderers like these. So thanks very much Maximo and I'll be dropping that video very shortly on the channel so stay tuned for that. Finally I want to draw attention to a blog post by Olof Kindgren who's suggesting maybe it's time to say goodbye to UVM. So really interesting blog post and it sparked quite a lot of discussion on Twitter and LinkedIn so check it out and weigh in the comments what your opinion is. Okay, that's it for this month. During October, I'm going to be continuing to prepare for the Hackaday Supercon with the tiny tape out face-to-face -face workshops and I'm looking forward to seeing some of you there. So have a great month.